Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And a very good day to everyone. My name is Dr. Muhammad Muhaizam bin Haji Musa. And I will be your instructor for today's session. And what we're going to have today is that we're going to discuss uh, um, the continuation of Chapter 3 of the uh, course Bank Management, uh, a topic about analyzing bank financial statement. So let us continue with the next what we're going to have. So what we're going to discuss for today is that we're going to see a little bit about the components in the assets of the bank firm. Now, number one component is cash and cash due from depository institution. So basically, this type of asset is actually known as a primary reserve. So what is being used for this item is that it is being used as a first line of defense against customer deposits, withdrawals, and also it is being used as an important source of fund to meet customer loan requests. So the cash and due from depository institution is the item of uh, the asset of the bank that is being used to support uh, the bank's activity to give loans to customer and also as a point to uh, give back customer deposits withdrawals when they um, want to get back their money from the bank that they have to put in their deposits. So basically, sometimes uh, when the bank place their asset in cash and due from depository institution, they earn little or no interest income because of the uh, period that the banks uh, put their this item in another bank is usually um, short term uh, needs. So it is going to have a little uh, interest rate given back uh, to this item of asset. Uh, examples of uh, how these uh, items can be seen is that the cash that is held in the bank's vault or the deposits that is being placed with another bank or uh, item cash items in the process of collection and the bank's firm's reserve account which is held by the central bank. So basically, we also going to uh, next thing is we're going to see uh, the next item, which is the investment securities, uh, liquid portion. So this is examples of uh, liquid security holding. So this will be the second line of defense to meet the demand for cash. Uh, so it is a middle ground between cash asset and loans, and this item in asset uh, type actually earn some income in, or interest rate income that they get and it is uh, held mainly for the ease in which uh, they can easily be converted into cash on short notice uh, the investment securities can be bought by the bank and then when there is a need uh, for banks to get cash the bank can easily sell this uh, asset uh, securities to the market uh, in the short time and they can get the cash from the sales of these securities uh, to the bank uh, quickly uh, fast okay so that is how uh, liquid uh, securities holdings is very important for banks now often it is called secondary reserve or referred uh, on regulatory report as available for sale uh, in the uh, financial statement or financial reports of banks. Typically, it includes holding of short-term government securities. Uh, this is a form of uh, fixed income securities that is uh, securities of government bonds. For example, treasury bills. Uh, like in case of Malaysia, uh, we have... Um, uh, bonds like uh, Benegara bills, okay. Uh, so that is also is called short term because why it is short term because it has the uh, maturity uh, period of less than one year. 
and then we also have a securities that is privately issued money market securities so this is uh is in the money market uh, in the financial market we also have a money market so it's very important uh is the transaction between uh banks okay and this is also uh, this item investment securities also include interest bearing time deposit held with other banking firm and Finally, commercial papers. So, commercial papers uh, is another uh, type of investment securities. Uh, this commercial papers usually is issued by company, a reputable company, big company that um, issue these uh, fixed income uh, securities, uh, debt securities. Uh, so, when a company uh, issue debt securities, we call those as commercial paper if that is a, a very liquid form okay next is that uh, investment security the income generating generating portion so this type of asset uh, is actually securities held primarily primarily for their expected return or we call also yield okay the percentage of interest return Examples of this uh, asset are called bonds or we call notes uh, or and uh, other securities. So basically, bond, we know that this is a fixed income uh, security. So it's uh, getting uh, a fixed uh, return. So we have notes. Notes is also a, uh, also a form of debt uh, issued uh, by a company and then other securities. Uh, investment securities can be divided into uh, taxable securities. Example, the names are government bond and notes, uh, securities issued by various federal agencies. Now here, uh, federal agencies are like, for example, in the United States, right? They have uh, the agency are uh, like student loan agency. Uh, we call this uh, agency, uh, 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 what we call, um, something like related to the government uh, let's like say for example in malaysia uh, we have a uh, agency that is related to uh, uh what call um, housing so we have uh, chagamas okay uh, so that is federal uh, agency okay and then we have a uh, corporate bonds and notes these are taxable securities that can be taxed and then we also have Tabs, exam securities, for example, uh, issuer of state and local government. So these are debt that is issued by, for example, um, uh, uh, can, uh, the small government, right? Uh, local government bonds. Okay, uh, these are uh, no uh, interest rate charge. And then we have uh, investment securities may be recorded on the book of a bank firm at their original cost or at also at market value. So it's different, right? Uh, cost or uh, what we call uh, how much the amount uh, of um, uh, being recorded in the financial statement. So uh, market value is based on what is the current uh rate that is being priced on that asset so usually uh, market value uh, is lower than um, their uh, original cost sometimes or can be higher now recent trend in accounting rules for banking is towards current market value practices which is going to replace historical costs because why uh, because the banks want to know what exactly the current real rate that the asset is being priced um, and the banks have in their uh, assets holding right so that is why they want to see what is the current market value on the assets that they held then we have in um, uh, portion of the asset we have trading account asset so usually these are securities purchased to provide short-term profits from short-term price movement so this is where uh, banks right, they use 
customer deposits and then they make investment by buying securities from the financial market. Uh, so here they want to uh, get gain from the in, uh, what we call price movement of the pri- of the uh, security prices in the financial market and that's why they bought this one for the sake of gen uh, earning profitability uh, so this is very important to look into uh, the movement of the market movement of the uh, money market a uh, movement of the financial market uh, as what we uh, have been looking at certain websites for example uh, investing.com so that is where um, the movement of markets can be uh, seen so when a price of a security increases right where there is a demand to buy that security so banks that hold the asset will make profitability now however when there is um what call pressure for the investor to sell the securities in the market so this will create the prices to be going down so when the prices going down it will make the prices of the securities to be less than the price that the said investor bought so if that's the case when the price is going down and that the bank purchase that securities when the price is expensive is high so it will make the bank to suffer losses even though that is not real losses which is real losses happen when the bank um exercise or they sell the asset to the market so if it is realized uh, uh activity trading so the bank will loss so that's why the banks have to really uh analyze whether or not they're going to buy a security or they want to sell a securities that they have they have to look at what will be the opportunity uh of gains that they can make from these trading accounts uh activities and usually these uh, items are reported as trading account assets So next is uh, this item is federal fund sold and reserve repurchase agreement. So this is a kind of asset that the bank hold uh, as part of, uh, for example, um, uh, requirements. For example, it includes a uh, temporary loans made to other depository institution, uh, security dealers, major industry corporation. So this is what um, I call we have. Uh, products in the financial market that uh, is issued by these kind of parties or uh, companies right and then uh, we have a uh, funds come from reserve from the reserve a bank has on deposits with the federal reserve bank so this is a uh, asset that is held with the central bank so it is recorded under federal funds and then we have also the items of repurchase agreement where the banking firm acquire temporary titles of two securities owned by the borrower which is then hold those security as collateral until the loan is paid off so that is repurchase agreement agreement and usually it is normally after only Uh, valid for a few days the contract eh, agreed between the buyer and the seller so bank will enter a repurchase agreement with the buyer the buyer will be the borrower so when they want to get some cash so usually the borrower will give certain uh, title that the borrower have as part of a collateral to that uh, need of the cash from the bank Uh, so the bank will give the money but in return uh, for giving the money to that borrower the bank will uh, ask for a title of security so this kind of arrangement is called repurchase agreement uh, so that is uh, how it goes under this uh, type of item in the asset then in the asset also includes a uh, loan and leases so it usually have a uh, the largest asset item for banks so in loan it co- uh, consists of uh, commercial and industry loans 
they have a consumer loan or they have also loans that is given to uh, individuals okay so this is normally what we the normal people borrow from banks and we have here a real estate loan okay um, the housing we have also loans to other institution uh, then also consists of foreign loans agricultural production loans uh, security loans and also leases right that is what they have now in the um, asset side we also have this part loan losses basically this loan losses is uh, deducted from the amount of total uh, loans figure banks are allowed to build up a reserve for future loan losses which is called the allowance for loan losses ALL based on the re their recent loan loss experience so this is a form of protection uh, they want to anticipate what will happen um, if they face these uh, losses right, of loans given to the borrower. So borrowers sometimes they default the loan. So banks will, in order for them not to uh, invest so much money uh, in other places, so they will get, a uh, bank will prepare a reserve to uh, account for the allowance for loan losses. The ALL, ALL is a contra asset account which represent an accumulated reserve against which loans declared to be uncollectible can be charged off. This means that bad loans normally do not affect current income. When a loan is considered uncollectible, the accounting department will write charge it off the books by reducing the ALL account by the amount of the uncollectible loans while simultaneously decreasing the asset account for gross loans. This is what happened. Uh, so, next. Now, in, in the item asset also, we have here specific and general reserve. So, this is allowance for loan losses ALL can be divided into specific reserve and also general reserve now specific reserve is set aside to cover a specific loan problem or loans expected to be a problem or that represent above average risk now general reserve is that it, the remaining reserve is the loan loss account after deducted specific reserve after deduction the specific reserve so that is it next item is non-performing or non-current loans which is called in the short name NPL non-performing loans so basically under NPL credit that has no longer accrue interest income or that have been restructured to accommodate a borrower change circumstances so because from uh, active loan that the customer pay their debt so when customer unable to pay the debt the bank will categorize these loans become NPL loans and usually the NPL loan is scheduled loan repayment which is past due more than 90 days so this is the category how they categorize this, this NPL and it will deduct from the loan reserve the loan revenue now also in the asset side will consist of the bank premises and fixed asset have also goodwill and other tangible intangible asset and all other asset as well now let us look at the next component uh, liabilities of the banking firm now here we can first item or very important item for banks uh, is deposits customer deposits so basically it has five major types of deposit now number one is the non-interest or non-interest bearing demand deposit checking accounts they have in the deposit saving deposit 
they have now accounts, they have the money market deposits account and time deposit. So these are the five main major types of deposit that a bank will record under their uh, financial statement as liabilities. Now, for, let's talk about this. Uh, borrowings from non-deposit sources. Now, borrowings in the money market, as what we ex explained, uh, what is money market, right? Uh, so, is is uh, such as repos, repurchase agreement, uh, banker acceptance, bill of exchange, and issuing commercial papers. So, these are the name of the product under borrowings in the money market. The larger the depository institution, the higher use it tends to make of non-deposit sources of fund. So remember that uh, liabilities is sources of fund for banks. So it is uh, where it, the bank can get funding or money in order for them to continue their operation. So this is uh, how it is. Next, under the liability uh, side, okay, uh, on the the this one is also consists of uh, having capital. So in capital, we call this equity capital. So this is a part of involving money that is owned by a shareholder, monies that is held by the bank, the the bank own money also. So here we have share capital which is uh, the stocks, okay? So, stocks can be common and also preferred stocks. And then we can, uh, under equity capital, also consists of retained earnings. So, money that uh, is being, uh, profitability that is being uh, saved um, by the bank. Uh, so, it is the retained earnings. And then, the banks also put contingency reserve. Uh, where this will be some form of uh, money that is kept to protect against unforeseen losses. Uh, and also, in this side is treasury stocks. So, let's look an overview of what balance sheet is all about. So, this is all the item position that we can see. As long as uh, all this together, the total asset here, must be equal with total liability and equity. Next, let us look at the statement of loan loss provision. So we can see that we have here the reserve for loan losses. Then we plus with uh, the provision. Uh, and then we will look into how much loan losses that has happened during that particular year. And also we look at if they, if they were recovery, this means that the bank are able to collect money from the borrower, right, in that previous year. So, it will be record, recorded as recoveries. So, let's say the customer pay their loan, able to pay their loan, uh, even though that they have defaulted, but they're able to pay. So, it will be recoveries. And also, um, um, whatever that the bank able to collect back from, the defaulting customer and then at the end it will be balanced as the ending reserve for loan losses now let us look at the second type of the financial statement uh, which is income statement so basically the income statement indicates the amount of reserve this amount of revenue received and also look at the expenses incurred over a specific period of time so the principal sources of bank revenue is following is as follows number 1 is the interest income generated by the bank's earning asset so mainly the loans they also get income from the securities that they get they purchase so the returns is of the price accumulation they get uh, income right and also the interest paid for the securities that they bought and also they have income from interest bearing deposit they are part of the cash asset and also any miscellaneous asset that is generating revenue so here we look at the expenses major expenses that usually being paid by the bank all right is 
uh, interest paid to the customer deposits, interest owned on non-deposit borrowing, and the cost of equity capital, salaries that have to be paid to the workers, bank employees, or the overhead costs associated by the bank physical plan or bank physical allocation, and then the funds set aside for possible loan losses, and then we have the tax that have to be paid by the government and also miscellaneous expenses. So basically, uh, the difference between all revenues and the expenses will be the net income. That is how the what the profitability of the bank earns for that particular year. And let's look a little bit about the interest income. Interest and fees generated from uh, loan losses, loan accounts for most bank reserve. But normally, it is a two-thirds or more than the total. It is uh, followed in importance by the investment earnings from taxable and tax-exempted securities, interest earned on federal fund loans and repurchase agreements. So, this is federal fund loans is the, like, say, government uh, loans, all right? And then, uh, interest received on time deposit placed with other banks. Then, what are the interest expenses? So, basically, this will be uh, hugely coming from the customer deposits. And then, basically, the net interest income is many banks subtract total interest expenses from total interest income to yield net interest income or often it is referred to as interest margin the gap between the interest income and also the interest cost this net interest income is the key profitability determinants then we have loan loss expense we have here Another expense item that the bank can deduct from current income is known as the provision for possible loan losses. So, this provision account is uh, really a non-cash expense. Its purpose is to shelter a portion of the bank's current earnings from tax in order to help prepare bad loans. Then, what is the non-interest income? So, it is a source of income other than the earnings from loans and securities. Normally, includes fees uh, earned from offering services. So, these are basically other than the interest income. So, banks also will get money from services that they charge to customers based on also uh, fees that they collect from customers for delivering services. Uh, for example, uh, let's say if, uh, a customer, they go you know, and transfer money uh, to overseas. So, banks will usually, they will charge the customer a certain administration fee and also a little bit of portion of the uh, income from that, that uh, service. So, that is why the non-interest income is generated. And recently, non-interest income or fee will have been targeted by banks as the key source for future revenue. So this will be because why? Because now, now nowadays most banks are becoming more uh, self service oriented, and they provide uh, more services to customer. Uh, because customer uh, is always in need uh, to use services by the bank because to manage their money or to give advice or and so on. Anything to do with uh, money activity. Sorry about that. So next is looking at the non-interest uh, expenses. So it is the uh, key uh, the key non-interest expenses are including the wages, salary, and other personal expenses. So, other, others are costs of maintaining bank properties and rental fees uh, on office space, bank furniture, bank equipment, the legal fees that they have to pay for their documentation, the papers and office supplies that the bank have to do in administration, uh, and also repair costs. 
uh, non income includes uh, net income includes the equal to the income that the firm has after uh, subtracting the cost and expenses from the total revenue net income can be distributed among the holders of the common stock as dividends uh, or held by the firm as retained earnings so if the bank uh, decided not to distribute the money among the shareholders so it will be kept as retained earnings here so let's see an overview of the uh, income statement this is the overview so next what is the off balance sheet now this is very important uh, that we need to understand what is the component of off balance sheet now basically it is a fee based activity offered by banks banking institution that normally do not show up on the balance sheet recently bank have has com has converted many of their customer service into fee generating transaction that are not recorded on their balance sheet balance sheet means that did not record in the income statement did not record in their uh, uh called uh, asset and liability so these uh, items is recorded into off balance sheet items now prominent examples of off balance sheet items include as follows uh, standby credit agreements uh, interest rate swaps so standby credit agreements are bank pledge to guarantee repayment of a customer loan received from a third party so usually this one is usually uh, in uh, the activity of uh, international loan right or trade financing uh, so in trade financing the banks involved in providing trade financing to uh, importers exporters so they have this standby credit agreements so this item is recorded in the off balance sheet items and also the next item uh, is the interest rate swaps so basically it is a bank promise to exchange interest payment on debt security with another party so this is a contract that is signed by the bank when they uh, propose this uh, in uh, with another bank so this is sometimes is being used by banks to manage their risk exposure of movement of interest rate so this is item is used by bank to protect for example volatile movement of interest rate because banks uh, their asset and their liability are exposed to interest move rate movement right so a way for the banks to minimize their uh, exposure to fluctuation of interest rate they go and enter agreement or contract of interest rate swaps so let's say for example if they want to swap their uh, exposure from floating interest rate floating interest rate uh, for example uh, interest rate is like this so if let's say for every month they have to change their interest rate differently because of the volatile movement so let's say that they want to protect this volatile movement what will happen is that they are able to fix in enter into a swap market and um, instead of volatile interest rate they will lock uh, the contract uh, with another party so the another party will uh, actually have a fixed interest rate on that asset so the the differences in the agreement right will be uh, recorded in the off balance sheet item next in the item of off balance sheet also include financial futures and option interest rate contracts so basically this is where a bank agree to deliver or to take delivery of securities from another party as a guarantee at a guaranteed price and then they also have loan commitments where uh, in this item a bank pledge to lend up a certain amount of funds until the commitment matures and also uh, in the off balance sheet item uh, have foreign exchange rate contract so 
Here is where a bank agrees to deliver or accept delivery of foreign currencies uh, contract. Next is that the problem with this off balance sheet transaction is that they often expose a bank to added risk even though that they may not show up uh, in conventional bank condition report. So that's why that is the risk when you take out the item uh, from the balance sheet item into off balance sheet items so the if there is a certain exposure that the banks have to be aware let's say for example a volatile movement in the market so if the bank did not look at off balance sheet item and keep on um, what we call um, mismanaging their balance sheet not according to the exposure so it will make a uh, possibility for the bank to make a uh, future uh, losses or future uh, decision that will make the bank to face risk so that is the uh, possible uh, exposure that the bank would face with this off balance sheet item the amount is not uh, managed properly in the off balance sheet item now, other useful bank balance sheet statements will be uh, as follows. They are two useful sources of financial information to supplement the information provided on the balance sheet and income statement. They are the fund flow or sources and users of fund statement. The other one is the capital account statement or stockholder equity. Now, the number one uh, additional information that the bank can use is the sources and users of fund statement. Basically, it answers two questions. Number one, where did the funds of a bank use over a certain time of period uh, coming from? And then the second question is, how were those funds being utilized? So, it is based upon the following relationship let us look at this relationship now funds provided to the bank over a specific period of time must consist of the funds that is provided from the operation and the decreases in the asset and also increases in the bank's liability right now what about uh, look answering the question about uh, a specific period of time so funds use the usage eh? the usage of the fund in the specific period of time so this is from the dividends paid eh? they, they use their money paid to the stockholders and they also use the money to increase the bank's asset or they use the money that they have to decrease their exposure their decrease their liabilities uh, if if I remember, liabilities are something that the bank have to be tied up, um, have to be liable to. So usually, in order for banks to be better manage their position, usually they try to reduce their liabilities, their exposures, right? Their de uh, dependency on customer deposit and so on. Now, and of course, uh, funds provided to a to the bank over a period of time must equal to the funds used by the bank during the specific period of time, the same time. So both must balance the users of funds and the uh, sources of funds must balance at all time. Now, um, capital account statement or the statement of stockholders equity now basically uh, the financial report reveals changes in all important capital account showing how the owner's investment of fund in the bank has changed uh, over time stockholders equity represent a cushion of financial strength for the banks that can be used to absorb losses and to protect depositors and other creditors and also changes in the bank's capital account 
are closely followed by regulators and large depositors. So this is a very important uh, amount that is uh, monitored by these people. And finally, you know, this is on our last slide. Uh, bank analyst looks closely at these statements to make sure that bank's capital account is still growing fast enough to keep up with the growth of the asset, especially loans, right? So the more loans, the better for the banks, but they also have to ensure that when the bank give loans, the banks also must have capital. Uh, if a capital account is declining, analysts try to determine if the amount of the owner's capital remaining is sufficient to absorb all expected losses with an added cushion to deal with unexpected losses. So this is how a bank must prepare for the future circumstances, future uh, condition, right? They must have this capital. So without capital, the banks will face a certain uh, situation, a negative situation which will uh, impact the bank operation. So uh, this is the end of our discussion, our um, topic discussion of uh, this chapter. So I hope that everyone is uh, understand what uh, have been discussed. And if you have any information or if you want to find out further information, you are always welcome to read the textbook that we use for this course. And also you can always refer to online uh, to find out more information about the items that we learned today. So I hope that everyone um, have understood what we discussed today and we hope that uh, to see you again in the future. So thank you very much for listening to me until we meet again next time. Assalamualaikum. Bye.